Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. Welcome to Stocks Unlocked. My name is Paige Golding. I'm a senior wealth advisor at NTV Capital Markets, and it is my distinct pleasure to be your host this evening. We are so grateful that you are here with us. And whether you're a seasoned investor or you're just starting out, understanding the basics of equity investing is essential. And we at Capital Markets, we recognize that. So this evening, we are going to be breaking down the fundamental concepts to empower you with the knowledge needed to make informed investment decisions. Tonight, you'll gain valuable insights into the current economic landscape and how it impacts investment opportunities in the stock market. Guess what? We have our experts are here. They are ready to provide you with a comprehensive view to help you navigate through uncertain times so that you can understand why now is the time to buy stocks. So can I see some thumbs up? Who's ready to get some stocks unlocked? Who is ready to have that knowledge unlocked and you are ready to know how you can invest in stocks and make your money, right? Because that's what we're here for, right? Let me see some more thumbs up. We are here because we want to make some money. And that is why we are here as your financial partner. So make sure that you're going to pay close attention. Let me tell you why. Would it be a webinar without little giveaways? Of course not. But you have to make sure that you're taking your notes. Because if you're not taking the notes, you're not going to know the answer, right? So I'm going to right now, just we're jumping right in. We have a full evening for each of for you guys. And we don't want to waste one moment. We are happy that you are here with us. So at this point in time, I am going to actually introduce or two persons who will be presenting this evening. We have with us Janiel Taylor McDonald, Senior Wealth Advisor, right? Hello, I'm my apologies, Manager of Wealth Manager. Look at me, Janiel, taking your good, good title away, right? Expert, right? <laughs> but Janiel will be starting us off this evening by speaking on equity basics. Janiel, over to you. Good evening, everyone, and thank you for joining. Let me share my presentation. Okay. All right, so I will just be going through the basics of what stocks are, and pretty much how you can earn from stocks. All right, but first I'm gonna just give you some information about NCB Capital Markets. NCB Capital Markets is the wealth and asset management arm of the NCB Group Limited. Started in 1968 by Edward Gale as an equity boutique to facilitate the development of vibrant stock markets in Jamaica. In 2002, Edward Gale & Company became a wholly owned subsidiary of NCB Group and following the merger with NCB Investment was later, well, sorry, was later renamed or rebranded as NCB Capital Markets in December 2003. Now the company is actually the oldest operational um, 
brokerage house in the English-speaking Caribbean, serving clients globally. NCB Capital Market has many investment products and services available, one of which is allowing our clients to buy and sell stocks on the Jamaica stock market. Now, what we'll be covering this evening in my presentation is what are stocks, what are the benefits of stocks, how you earn from it, and how can NCB Capital Market help you to reach your financial goals? All right, so first thing we want to ask is, do you know your risk appetite? Or what is a risk appetite? Now, a risk appetite is basically your willingness and ability to take risks, right? So here, we have it as a measure of how much risk you can handle as an investor. Now, there are factors, though, that determine your risk appetite. One, the amount of money you're, look, you're looking to invest is one. Two, your time horizon, which is how, when, when do you want to achieve your, your objectives? Your age, your current financial standing, your emotional ability to handle risk, and the overall risk level of your entire investment portfolio. Now we can group risk tolerance in three different groups, right? We have conservative, which describes low risk. We have moderate, which describes medium level risks. And we have, we have aggressive, which des describes high level risks. All right, so what is a stock? What is a stock? So a stock, whenever you hear stocks, equity, or shares, basically speaking about the same thing. So stocks are known as shares, equities, and they represent ownership rights in a company. So you basically are owning a piece of a company. When you buy a company, you become a part owner of that company. Shareholders or stockholders own a portion of a company equivalent to the amount of stocks you hold. Sorry, right. So stocks are traded on an on exchange and in Jamaica, or as it's called, JCS, Jamaica Stock Exchange, right? And Jamaica Stock Exchange is the regulatory body that oversees. So it's basically a marketplace that all the different investors come buy and sell stocks, right? Now, the price of a stock is determined by the forces of demand and supply. Now, demand and supply is influenced by several different factors. And these may include companies' financial performance, market sentiment, economic conditions, or even the broader in industry trends. Now, there are two ways you earn from a stock. Capital appreciation, or what we call cat gains, and this is the increase in the value of stock over time. So you pretty much buy a stock for $5, the stock increases to 10. The difference between that, those two prices is your capital appreciation, right? The other form of our benefit from a stock is what's called dividend payments, right? And dividend is basically the company dividing their profits dividing their profits and, and basically giving it to the different shareholders, different stockholders, the different owners of the company. Now, there are times, however, that the company does not make profits and they can choose to actually take these funds from their reserves, right? So points of information. Now, the two, two forms of stocks, the two types are common or ordinary, which is the most regular on our stock exchange. Now, with this form of stock, you get voting rights. So whenever a company, um, they have their annual general general meeting, you have been invited and you go to vote for or against whatever motion that they have. So you can vote, you have voting rights. The other um, characteristic is of, of common stocks is that dividend payments are not, they are not um, a staple, right? The company actually has the discretion to pay or not pay. All right, so let's look at preference share, which is the other form or other type of a stock. Now, preference share, the dividend is fixed or it is predetermined, right? So for instance, company A promises to pay 10% per annum or per month, 
and they promise, they, they, they'll tell you what the maturity is. So it's a fixed or you know the dividend rate going in. Now, another characteristics of preference share is that the, as the name suggests, the preference share holders get preference whenever there's a liquidation. So if the company were to go bankrupt, they get paid first. And unlike the common share, there's no voting rights. So you don't get voting rights with preference shares. All right. Now let's look at how we, NCB Capital Market, can help you build out your stock portfolio. Now, NCB Capital Market is a premier destination for stock trading in Jamaica with a suite of well-seasoned um, wealth advisors ready to assist you on your investment journey. We provide a variety of solutions to reaching your financial goals. We will assist in actually assessing your risk appetite and personally crafting a tailored investment solution and proposals that align with achieving these objectives, these goals that you have. So NCB Capital Markets is also provided with stock research pieces, recommendation that we send to your emails, and we also provide you with the opportunity to actually do trades, whether it's on the market, the junior market, main market, or the US market. And we provide that opportunity it's through our Wealth Connect app that you can actually download on App Store or Play Store. Now, I guess everybody who is here know that now is the time to actually buy equity. So it's quick and spicy. If you have any questions, feel free to just drop it in the question and answer chats. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Janil. Quick and spicy is right, but that's how we want it, right? Because we really, that was a, you know, like when you have a baby and we start off with a little milk, that was a little milk. No one want to jump into some big food, right? Or no, maybe it's appetizer, no, right, Raju? We're just giving them a little appetizer, no, before the entree. So at this point in time, I want to invite Raju Gunnings, who is a senior research analyst with NCB Capital Markets, to give us an a review of the economy currently, an economic review. Before he comes on, though, just a few things to note. At any point in time, you can send your questions and in the chat, the Q&A chat. We do have Danielle Spence here, who she may be answering some of the more simple questions in the chat itself. And then outside of that, any any questions that may require just a little more depth, a little more details, we will answer here in the forum at the end. So please, from now, you can be sending in whatever questions you may have. If there's something specific that you'd like us to speak to, we want to hear from you. Because really and truly, that's what this webinar is about, right? It's about making sure that you are getting the knowledge that you are seeking. We want you to leave here feeling empowered, knowing how you can approach the stock market. So please don't keep the questions to yourself. We want all of them. So Raju, over to you. And remember, we we'll have giveaways. I need you guys to be paying attention or you can't win anything, right? Raju, thank you so much for being here. And I'm sure that we are going to be really and truly grateful for all that you're going to share with us about what's currently happening in the economy. All right. Thanks, Paige. Let me just uh, bring up the presentation. Here, share screen. Great. Hopefully, everyone can see my screen. Let me just put this in full screen. Can everyone see my screen? Seeing it. Okay. All right. Great. So, hold on to me. Okay. All right. So, uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, thanks again for joining. So, we just got an appetizer. I guess I'll start with the main course. And then later on, we, we get to the dessert, which are the stock picks. And I know everyone will be excited to hear about some of the recommendations that we have. Um, so, firstly, I'll be going through the economic review, which I hope will provide insights into the current economic landscape, as well as the outlook to explain why they impact investment opportunities in the stock market. And then, as I was saying before, once that's done, we can get to the dessert, which is the or uh, which are the stock picks that we have. So as investors, it's important for us to monitor the current economic environment or the economic landscape 
and as well as the outlook because they impact companies' earnings, returns to inv investors, and ultimately stock prices. They are also factored in the stock recommendations, which drive recommendations by our advisors to our valid clients. So let's start with the current economic landscape. In monitoring the economy, the NCB Cap Markets research team focuses on several macroeconomic variables, and the following are of key importance. We have economic growth, we have unemployment, inflation, and interest rates. Our observation, as the infographic shows, is that the current economic landscape is a mixed bag. Some drivers like low unemployment and positive economic growth support stock market performance, while others, notably high interest rate, are a hindrance to the stock market. Uh, so let's go through each. In terms of economic growth, which is measured by gross domestic product, it reflects the overall health and expansion of an economy. And when the economy grows, it leads to increased wages and consumer spending, which boosts company profits and their ability to pay dividends or reinvest for further growth. Under these circumstances, investor, investor confidence is often higher as they will buy more stocks, which helps to fuel market activity and stock market appreciation. So Jamaica's economy would have grown by about 2% in 2023. Um, this is lower than the growth during the recovery from, from COVID, but it's still a good sign that the economy is healthy and is a positive for the stock market. Moving on to low unemployment, um, let's just uh, you know uh, define what unemployment rates are. It really reflects the proportion of the labor force or the population that's that's actively seeking employment but are unable to find work. Uh, Statin would have reported a 4.2% unemployment rate as of October 2023. This is a historical low for Jamaica and a positive sign um, for the local stock market. And this is because low unemployment reflects a strong economy where more people have jobs, and higher wages to purchase more goods and services. Businesses um, have reported, you know, recently that they're seeing increased demand for products and uh, for the products they sell, and this is translating to higher revenues, profits, and ultimately their stock price. Um, last year would have seen where the manufacturing and distribution companies definitely benefited from strong, from strong demand. And this is undoubtedly, uh, at the very least in part due to the low unemployment that we're seeing um, in Jamaica. And now when we move on to inflation, um, this refers to the price, uh, that refers to the rate at which the prices for goods and services rise in an economy. And coming out of the, the pandemic, inflation would have risen sharply, peaking at around 11.8% in April of 2022. But it has come down since, it's, it, but it's taking longer than expected to sustainably fall within the Bank of Jamaica's target range, which is about 4 to 6%. And that's a sweet spot um, for inflation in our economy. According to Statin, um, inflation was around 6.2% as of April 2024. Those are the latest numbers. And it's slightly above um, the target, but, still the, it, but it still demonstrates that inflation is moderating which is beneficial um, to stock market performance. And this is because when there's moderate inflation, especially within the four to 6% range, it signals a healthy economy with rising demand and wages. However, when inflation gets too high, as was the case with 11.8% in, in, April, in April of 2022, it, it, it will erode people's spending power, which weakens company sales, profitability, investor confidence, and hence the stock price. Um, so the, 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 the final, the four, is the interest rates. So interest rates are set by central banks to influence borrowing costs for businesses and consumers alike. If interest rates get too high, it can discourage borrowing and dampen economic growth. And it also increases the yield or potential return on bonds, making them more attractive relative to stocks. And these and other reasons, for these and other reasons, high, high interest rates can lead to lower stock values. Currently... I think I heard something just now or, okay, let me continue. Currently, interest rates are at uh, heights not seen since 2011. And the major driver, and this is the major major driver that's depressing the stock market, especially when the other three factors that we mentioned before are moving in the right direction. Therefore, um, when the Bank of Jamaica, because they're the ones that really have control of, over the interest rate movements, when they start to cut rates, we expect to see a significant um, improvement in the stock market. So the last five years would have given us an interesting case study that demonstrates the impact of the four economic factors that would have outlined just now. So let's see how the economic landscape um, over those five years would have influenced the stock market's performance. 
in early 2020, um, with the onset of COVID, the stock market would have re reacted negatively to this news and unemployment would have spiked to around 12.6%, the highest since around 2017. And this is bad for the stock market uh, performance as we would have just discussed. Eventually though, there were signs of a stock market recovery as lockdown measures waned and return to office accelerated. However, well not however, and we would have seen where some junior market manufacturing companies especially would have reported strong demand for their products um, during that recovery period. Nevertheless, inflation um, was rising or started to rise um, between July 2021 and 2022, coinciding with when, you know, we started to come, come back to office and when we kind of, you know, got acclimated to COVID and we, you know, started to learn to live with it. Uh, but once inflation started to increase, this prompted the Bank of Jamaica to raise interest rates and this would have depressed the stock market activity and prices. And as a result, the uptrend that we saw, especially for the junior market companies where you see the green arrow, it was short-lived. And with interest rates um, still elevated, the stock market remains depressed, despite positive economic growth, low unemployment, and inflation. And when we look at the, um, the first three months of 2024, we would have seen where the stock market had, you know, a little up, some, some ups and downs, but it was marginal. But largely the performance has remained relatively flat. And again, this is because of the high interest rate environment. But that doesn't mean that there aren't opportunities to, for investors to take advantage of. And actually, we have a positive outlook. Um, because, and we see that there are some stocks um, it, uh, stocks on the market that have the right um, fundamentals to outperform. At NCB Cap Markets, we give buy recommendations for companies with part, with promising futures. Later, we'll delve into- Hang on, Rashu, you're jumping into the stock picks? Because I want no, to- No, not yet, not yet. Okay. Not yet, not yet. Just pause no, you jump yet. into the stock picks for me, all right? Yeah, I will, I will. No problem, no problem. So I'm just setting the setting setting um the table for that. Uh, so at NCB Cap Markets, we do give buy recommendations for companies with promising futures. Later, we'll delve into that. But we, it's also important for us to have a positive macroeconomic outlook because this is also a key determinant for stock performances. And while it's impossible to know for certain, we maintain a positive medium-term outlook for the market's recovery. And this is grounded in our belief that there will be a net positive impact from our four outlined economic drivers that we just discussed. So before I get to the stock picks, let's just talk about the macroeconomic outlook. Firstly, we expect that economic... First, we expect positive economic growth for Jamaica, with the World Bank, Fitch, and other authorities, you know, um, projecting that Jamaica's economy will see long-term growth, and actually at a rate that's faster than the, than, than the um, average for the last five years leading up to the pandemic. And this will be driven by a strong tourism sector, plus the government recently mentioned, you know, that they have a budget of our own, actually, uh, that... Well, the government would have would have budgeted around a one trillion Jamaican dollars um sp to spend on infrastructure projects over the next five years, as well as an eventual easing of inflation and interest rates, which should support the growth outlook. Um, additionally, we expect that um there will be that that unemployment levels will remain low in twenty twenty four onwards, and this will be led by a strong performance in tourism, manufacturing, and other sectors. Moreover, the government of Jamaica plans to increase the skill set of Jamaica's workforce through training, which also augurs well for employment, wages, and productivity. And the low unemployment should support consumer spending, company profits, and investor confidence, especially with recent wage increases and the government of Jamaica announcing um, an increase in the minimum wage threshold. Additionally, we believe that the U.S. economy will remain resilient despite the high interest rate environment. And like Jamaica, the World Bank, Fitch, and other authorities would have also, you know, shared their projections for continued growth in the U.S. economy. And this is important because the U.S. economy is one of the one of our main trade partners and a key source market for tourism. So it's very important for the U.S. market to perform well as when they perform well, the local economy will perform well as well. And that will translate to better stock market performance. While inflation is proving sticky, we also expect that it will eventually settle within the Bank of Jamaica's target range, which is around four to 6% by 2025. And as inflation eases, this is the most important part, as inflation eases, it will likely prompt um, the Bank of Jamaica to, you know, 
initiate rate cuts, paving the way for a lower interest rate environment, which should stimulate business activity. And with the rate cuts, we expect that the stock market valuations and activity will rebound, which, which you know, once we get in now and we get, to, we get some stocks with strong fundamentals, we can enjoy the ride up. So as a result, we do see an opportunity to invest in companies, as I was saying, with strong fundamentals at low prices so that we can benefit from the upside. Okay, great. So um, we're at the end of the economic review. I hope that we are we we are now in a better we now have a better appreciation of the current economic landscape, the outlook, and how it impacts stock market opportunities. We'll be back after after, after these messages. So I'll, I'll hand over to Paige. Uh, uh, when we get back, we we'll get to the dessert, which are the stock picks, and I know everyone's waiting for that. Thanks, Paige. Thank you so much, Raju. I know it was a lot crammed into a small session, but I'm sure that after this, we are willing to send out information on this that you guys can dive into it. And our advisors are present to help. But just a quick synopsis, Raju was really and truly talking about the fact that, you know, the market conditions currently are actually poised for growth. So even though the stock market is depressed, and I know a lot of people look at us and say, what I mean, right, Raju, just quickly, what I mean when you say that the stock market is depressed, something simple like that I would take for granted that person's may know. So just a quick. Um, so when we speak about the stock market being depressed, if you remember leading, especially coming to um, the COVID-19 pandemic, um, the Jamaica Stock Exchange was one of the best performing um um, stock markets, right? It was at um, incredible highs, record highs, but then especially it was just a perfect storm of things just going bad. COVID came, then inflation, and in the high interest rate environment. So currently, the stock market uh, is at a uh, lows not seen since maybe 2017 thereabouts. So it's 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 way below the heights that we would have seen coming into the into the pandemic. And as we were saying before, there is just a, a perfect storm of you know, just different macroeconomic One thing factors. after the other. <laughs> right. Just, you know, just, just hitting, that, hitting the market. So, yeah, when, when we say depressed, we just mean that yeah. it's 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 way below the highs that we are used to, especially in recent memory. But there are opportunities or there is a potential Bunker. for it to recover very soon. I really actually wanted to point out that because I know a lot of persons, when people started getting excited about stocks, it was back when people were doing IPOs, people were seeing a lot of turnover in the junior market and people wanted that, right? They wanted to get the gains and get in and people were excited about stocks. And since then, you see, when you hear the word depressed, it's literally what it is. It's yeah. sad. It's yeah. kind of both sad. It's not performing at mm -hmm. optimal. And that's what I kind of want persons to understand. And I see someone commented, best time to buy is no. When the economy rebounds, then there's appreciation. That's what we want persons to understand. So we're looking at, and that's why you're going to take close notes of the stock picks, right? Because no is not the time to be shy with stocks. No is the time to actually get into your stocks. Before we go into that, I'm going to have a giveaway shortly. But before, I would love for us to just Right now, we're going to look at, I saw some questions about opening an account, and we have the answer with our Go IPO account opening. I'm just going to ask right now for us to play the video so that you can know how you can open your account with Go IPO. Opening an investment account on Go IPO is easier than before. Using your NCB online credentials, simply log on to goipo.jncb.com to provide the required information. Our digital biometric identity verification system will confirm your ID instantly, so your account will be opened in minutes. Plus, now you can open your investment account with up to three joint account holders. So build your wealth and experience life with NCB Capital Markets. So you see how simple it is? I remember I was doing a presentation and I, I mentioned Go IPO in my presentation. And by the time I was done the presentation, somebody came up to me and said she had just opened up her account while I was presenting. You can go and open your account right now at Go IPO site. And that is how you can open your account with up to three joint holders. So no excuses, right? You guys can open your account right now. So we are going into our first giveaway. Let me see the, the, the hands clapping for the first giveaway. Who excited for the first giveaway? Who's excited? Yep, no, man, I don't see enough claps. All right, let me tell you what the prize is. Maybe then you'll be excited. The first giveaway is going to be the winner of a $10,000 gift certificate to an existing NCB Capital Markets client. So that is to an existing person, somebody who already has an account with us. 
You're going to get $10,000. And of course, this is, we know that what we're going to do with this, we're going to invest it, right? We're going to buy some stocks. 10,000 Jamaican dollars, bless God. 10,000 Jamaican dollars. So we are running into our first question. Ready? Let me see the readies. Let me see the thumbs up. We're ready. The first question is, how can you make money from stocks? And I'm looking for a specific answer. How can you make money from stocks? You're going to put your answer in the chat. We are monitoring the chat. And I think I see the person who won it because it's not just one answer. That was a tricky them. I was looking to see who would remember that is not just one answer. There are two ways for you to make money from stocks. And that is dividends and capital appreciation. Right. And I saw where somebody put it. I know a lot of people jumped in and said dividends, but that's not the only way. You also make your gains when the stock price goes up. So I'm sure that we, whoever is monitoring the chat, they will make contact with the person who answered first and you will be the winner of a $10,000 gift certificate. A reminder that this is for a person who already has a capital markets account. So please make sure that you already have, and don't, don't think say you can go open it. No, you know, we're going to know if you just open it, right? That's not what we mean. We mean somebody who has already had an account. But thank you so much. We are going to jump right into another video that speaks about the other side of it, right? So we have our Go IPO, which used to open the account. But how do you actually be able to trade without having to come in branch, for example? And so you're going to get a look at our Wealth Connect app. Investing just got easier. Introducing the NCB Capital Markets mobile app. We've expanded our digital investment solutions just for you. Build wealth anywhere, anytime. Buy and sell equities, manage your investment portfolio, view stock trends and daily market performance. Download today. Register using your existing NCB online banking login credentials. To open an account or get more info, contact our Wealth Hub today. So that is our Wealth Connect app. That is how you are able to not only view your accounts in real time, you can trade in real time. It has stock picks of the week in real time. It shows you pricing on the stock market as you are trading. It is an amazing app. And the best part, you don't have to go get no new credentials. It's the same credentials that you use for your online banking. It's not something else you have to remember. You just download the app and you are already on your way to being unlocked with your stock journey. So Raju, I'm heading right back into you because now we reach the entree, not even dessert. Dessert is the question and answer. It's the entree we're at now, Raju, right? The meat of it, where we're talking about our stock picks. People want to know which stock I must buy. Yeah, man, they're not tell me all of this, but what stock am I supposed to buy? And which stock have dividends? Which stock is a good stock? No, that's what the people want to hear. Over to you, Raju. All right, thanks, Paige. Um, not to worry, guys. Um, so in our stock picks, so we're gonna have four stock picks today, or we're gonna discuss four stocks. And one of them are one of the one of those stocks is a consistent dividend payer for those. So for those um investors that like their consistent dividend payments, not to worry, got you covered. All right, let me just uh share my screen again. And hopefully someone can let me know when the presentation is back up. Can everyone see my screen? Okay. And can you guys see it in full screen? All right, great. Um, so welcome back everyone. Uh, uh, last on uh, well on on my in terms of what I'll be presenting today are the stock picks. Uh, although the market is currently down, we do have a positive outlook as I was saying before for stocks, and we have a or eye on a subset that you know have the right fundamentals to lead growth and potentially give higher returns to investors. So um, the NC, so for those, you know, for those investors that are curious in terms of what stocks to buy, the research team, we regularly uh, publish a curated list of the most attractive buys in our weekly market guide. I recommend that everyone, you know, reads that. Uh, we usually have some good stories in there um, to help you keep in, in touch with this, what's going on in the market. And then we also have some, some recommendations for you, right? 
So, but in terms of the four that we'll be covering today, because we wouldn't have time to do every single one, uh, we'll be making a case for four companies, Nuts Red Express, Carreras, which is the dividend, uh, which is a dividend payer, um, uh, Jamaica Broadest Group and Grace Kennedy. Right. So starting with Nuts Red Express, it's a luxury passenger uh, and courier transportation company that has shown impressive net profit growth since listing on the Jamaica Stock Exchange in 2014. Despite facing challenges during the pandemic, uh, Nuts Red Express is now benefiting from a strong rebound in tourism, in the tourism sector and the overall economy. Uh, Nuts Red Express has not only surpassed its pre-pandemic revenue and earnings, but has also reported a significant year-over-year -year growth of in revenue and earnings of 48% and 291%. Yes, you heard it, 291%. A lot, right? Its prospects remain positive, driven by a favorable outlook for tourism for the tourism sector, uh, with factors such as increased demand for travel, flexible work schedules, hotel expansions, and government marketing efforts fueling stopover arrivals and boosting demand for Nutsford Express's coach services. It has also made some strategic moves to drive revenues by expanding into new business lines that leverage its existing infrastructure. So they offer courier services across the island, which is basically just transportation of packages. So it's not just people, they also allow you to you know, send packages to or receive packages from different outlets. Um, Right. Moreover, they also um, are, you know, strategically moving into real estate investment as well with ventures like the Draxhall Business Center, which is expected to further bolster revenues through rental income. High, uh, and we expect um, high occupancy, um, high occupancy levels for the business center because of just the strategic location, which it is near Ocherius, and this is a growing community. So it's near Ocherius in the growing community of Draxhall, um, where several residential developments are underway. And it's also close to the um, close to the terminal. So you expect to benefit from that as well in terms of um, the, the, the tenants there um, could, can expect to generate business or revenue from the passengers that, that board and, you know, that 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 wait at the terminal uh, for their buses right so it plans to expand um routes including to st thomas which they recently announced as well as increased passenger volumes from flight from flights uh and increased fleet size not so express is positioning itself for continued growth and value creation to shareholders uh relative to its current price so the the stock currently trades at around eleven dollars and ninety four cents um this the stock, based on our valuation, the stock appears to be undervalued and it presents a potential capital gain of around 20% um, to investors. So remember early in the presentation or what would what we in terms of the question just now, there are two ways that companies can return um ret provide returns to investors. You have your dividend gains and you have your capital gains. So overall, the the, the total return that we expect from not for the express is around um it will give us a, a put a potential uh gain of around uh 30.5%. I, I think I might have uh made a mistake in terms of what I just said. So it's actually 35 30.5 percent in terms of what the total gain is to investors. So it's 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 a sizable amount. Moving on now to Carreras Limited. Um, so this is for the dividend for the for the dividend lovers out there. Um, it's Jamaica's leading marketer and distributor of tobacco related products. Over the last over the last five years, the company has demonstrated consistent growth um, in revenue and net profit. And they have consistently rewarded their shareholders with substantial dividends, um, averaging distributing an average of around 94% of its total profits over the period. And you might ask yourself, how is Carreras able to maintain, you know, paying out all of the net profits as dividends? It enjoys a relatively strong demand for its product. It has low leverage, which means that it's not burdened by a lot of debt and they don't have to, you know, be paying any interest expense or any finance costs as much. Um, and this lip uh, uh, and also, since it's a distributor, it has low fixed asset needs, which means that it doesn't have to, you know, be spending a lot on expansion or to 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 buy new fixed assets or just to buy new machinery to to continue um, normal operation of its business. Well, at the very least, when compared to other you know manufacturing and distribution companies, right? So this allows the company to generate substantial cash flows from its core operating activities, and consequently, Carreras is the highest dividend paying stock on the Jamaica Stock Exchange in terms of you know like not preference share, just like um, regular stocks with a current dividend yield of around 7.1% and an average dividend yield of 8.8% over the last over the past last 5 years 
So putting putting that into context, let's say you spend a million dollars on, let's say you spend a million dollars on 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 Carreras, you probably get around uh seventy thousand dollars. It's a lot compared to what other stocks you know might be um, providing. Um, and with recent strategic moves such as the introduction of Mataran and Rhythm and VU's electronic cigarettes, this has contributed to a significant uptick in Carreras' revenues, which surged by 23.4% since the beginning of the 2023-2024 financial year, which is, and this would have also supported a remarkable 50.9% increase in their net profits. Despite challenges, notably from the illicit cigarette trade and potential governmental regulations, which could impede revenue growth and margin expansion, the outlook is favorable and is supported by its innovative product offerings and its strong market position. With a fair value estimate of around $10.57, suggesting that the stock is undervalued, there's a potential for a 28.2% a capital gain, and along with that, dividend yield of around 7%, Carreras presents an attractive investment opportunity and a total return of around 31.1%. So because of that, because of all the factors I just mentioned, we um, think that Carreras is a buy, especially for those um, investors that love, that love their dividends. Next company um, that we'll be going through is Jamaica Broilers Group. Uh, the company operates in Jamaica, in the United States, as well as in other Caribbean territories. And it distributes products globally under the brands like Best Stress Chicken and Hyper Ace. I think most people would know at the very least Best Stress Chicken brand. Um, the, because of strategic initiatives that the company would have done, including expanding into new markets and, ex and enhancing its product offerings, um, this would have helped to propel the company's success. Over the last five years, its financial performance has been good, showing strong growth in revenue and profit, driven by its vertically integrated poultry operations across the United States. And I know that's a mouthful, but what that basically means is that they have um they have businesses throughout the entire supply chain. So in so they're in the chicken business, right? Primarily, right? So they have breeder farms, they have hatcheries for the new for the baby chicks, they have a feed mill, they have processing plant, and all of this means that they can be a lot more efficient in their operations and they're not as susceptible to um you know volatility in in, in the market because they have uh and they have assets at various stages of the supply chain. Right. So they basically can control their own destiny in certain in certain in certain respects. In the US, um, the Jamaica Brothers Groups, their best dressed chicken brand has emerged as a chicken brand of choice in several retail chains. And this implies that they are seeing a strengthening position in the US marketplace. And this would have supported a year over year improvement in both the US and Jamaican markets. Additionally, they, make, they, they continue to make investments in technology, and this has helped to improve the efficiency of their operations. And once they become more efficient, that means that more of the revenues that they generate um, can trickle down into earnings, which is good for investors. More returns in terms of uh, capital appreciation and dividend payouts. <clears throat> Overall, the company's financial metrics look really healthy. They remain liquid, which means that they have enough assets to cover, uh, you know, like um, short term expenses that will come due within less than a year. And, and we're, we did see, though, where their debt load in terms of the amount of debt that they are taking on has been increasing. But this was done to fund expansion plans. And these plans seem to be working because we're seeing where their revenues and their profitability would have improved. And this would have translated in their earnings per share and dividend payouts per share doubling over the five years, which is good for investors. Um, the company's profit margins, return on assets and return on equity, which basically says, you know, the amount of assets or the amount of um, cash and other forms of assets that they have, the amount of profit that they're generating from that is improving, which is also very good. Um, and in the medium term, we believe that the Jamaica Brothers Group is poised for growth, especially with their, as I was saying before, their ongoing cost reduction efforts and the expansion of revenue and, and, and their expanding revenues in the United States and Jamaican markets. Uh, we expect to see continued demand, especially with the opening of their South Carolina facility. This will help to drive performance, especially, you know, when we think about the rising. The, the, you know, just 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 the buoyancy are, are, are the, the 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 improvements that we're seeing in, in, in tourism locally, but as well in terms of the expanding expanding export markets. And given that they're exporting mainly to the United States, 
remember we we're talking about you know the macroeconomy outlook and the fact that we we're saying that we think that the US economy is expected to perform well that means that there will be more demand um and all companies can benefit Initially, we made our buy recommendation for Jamaica Broilers Group in January of 2023, and our target price was $38. That hasn't changed um, off the back of strong results and a compelling strategy. The price has increased from the $29 that it was in January 2023 to $33.18, but there's still a 16% upside, uh, which includes a 2.3% dividend yield. So, you know, for investors that, that like their dividends, it's not as high as Carreras, but still, you know, it's still something. Um, we, you know, we, and we expect that, you know, um, Jamaica Broilers Group will continue to, you know, grow from strength to strength. And as a result, we have Jamaica Broilers Group as an attractive buy as well. The last one we have on the list is Grace Kennedy. So we also think that Grace Kennedy is an excellent stock due to its diversified business model, which spans food manufacturing and financial services, and they have a strong global presence, um, they have a 2030 vision where they where they want to become the top Caribbean brand and they're leveraging digital transformation and mergers and acquisitions, which is basically um, them just going out, buying, buying companies to help strengthen their own operations, maybe give them exposure to new businesses, uh, maybe, you know, capture a new uh, or, or give them a, fo a, a footing in a new territory, which all um, is good in terms of revenue and earnings expansion. They, you know, they do initiatives in terms of um, product development, such as their GK1 app, and they're also expanding into healthier product categories, which showcases their commitment to meeting customer demand. And once you're meeting customer demand, you're going to have that brand loyalty and more people are going to want to, you know, purchase more GK products if you're meeting um, their demands. And GK is, a, you know, is a well-known, recognizable brand, right? Recent acquisitions bolstered their position in key factors. So recently they would have announced the acquisition of uh, 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 some bottled, some, some, they've made recent investments in bottled, in the bottled water business and they're now poised to, you know, um, do some exports. And that also means that, you know, that's a potential outlet for more revenue generation for the business. Um, they're also doing acquisitions in insurance and all of this is paving the way for increased revenue and profitability, which is very good for investors. That's what investors want to hear. Historically, um, their mergers and acquisition strategy has been a key growth engine. And we would have seen over the last five years or so where they had a, a steady uptrend in their revenues and their earnings. And recently, the company would have also announced that they reached a billion US dollars in revenue, a billion with a B, you know, and this means that they, it's a good sign that they're um, making good progress towards their ultimate goal. Well, at the very least up to 2030 of reaching $2.1 billion in revenue, right? So we expect economic growth, as we were saying before, and a slowing inflation outlook, which should also benefit Grace Kennedy. And this... Um, and while the banking and money services um, face some challenges, especially in the high interest rate environment, um, we believe that GK is still poised to solidify its position as a regional leader in food and beverage industry, and as well as the pending acquisitions that they have in insurance, as well as strategic uh, adjustments that they'll make um, for their money services business. I think it all augurs well for, um, you know, continued improvement in their earnings. Overall, we think that their diversified portfolio and proactive strategies make it an attractive investment opportunities with strong growth potential. It's been around for 100 years and it's well positioned to continue to grow from strength to strength. Like other companies, GK stock price would have faced some recent decline and it's mainly attributed to the high interest rate environment that would have mentioned before. But, and because of that now, there might be a nice buying opportunity for investors. GK trades at a price to earnings ratio, which is basically just a way to, um, you know, to, to, to compare um, different stocks in, a, in, in the same industry. Um, their price to earnings ratio is 9.4 times, which is below the industry average. And this suggests that um, GK is trading cheaper than some of its other peers. And with a dividend yield of 2.97%, yes, they're also a dividend payer. There's a potential upside of 23.5% if the stock is purchased at its current price now, which is $72.90. And this warrants a buy recommendation in our view. It's a strong company. It's been around for a, a long time, and we expect that it will be around for a, a long time as well. And there are various ways that they can continue to increase their revenues and earnings. Um, 
All right. So thanks. I think so. That would be the end of of our of our stock picks. I mean, I think it's a nice mix of dividend payers. We have a blue chip stock in Grace Kennedy, in Grace Kennedy, and we have other companies that are poised uh, for growth. You know, more aggressive growth profile. So that's the end of my presentation. Hopefully, you found it beneficial. Back to you, Paige. Thank you so much, Raju. I really love the stocks that you picked because, as you said, we had a diverse. Um, cross section across the different things that make stocks attractive, whether it's their, their growth, their growth oriented, meaning that you're looking for stocks that the companies are growth, they're look, they're expanding, they have their profits are going up, that sort of thing, or they're expanding their business lines, diversifying the business lines, you're seeing where it's working for them. Then you have the persons who are paying dividends consistently at Carreras. I know somebody was asking, if not Carreras, if we want another dividend stock, I'd suggested Raju TJH, right? As a yes, dividend. I was just about to say that. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, you also have your blue chip stocks, which are your fundamental stocks. These are the stocks that you have them and you hold them and you give them to your picnic, right? <laughs> but those are the stocks that really and truly have sound financials, sound fundamentals that are going to be able to allow them to be resilient through any struggles. Now, the thing is that with any stock portfolio, we all know that it's important for us to have a mix, right? You know, they always say, don't put all of your eggs in one basket the same provides true for your stocks you're making wise choices but you're not putting everything in one stock you're looking at the different types of stocks the different industries that the stocks are in as well to ensure that you have a great diversified portfolio to minimize your risk now i'm jumping right into our next giveaway and the next giveaway is for a new client and i say a new client because i know that you are going to sign up for ntb capital markets after this webinar right so if you do not have an existing capital markets account this question is for you and i want to know what were the four stocks all right i'll make it a little easier three of the four stocks that raju would have spoken to in the oh, there we go. People went off automatically. Diane, I hope you do. Diane, do you have an account? I said, oh, Okima, do you have your account? Yes. I, I hope we're seeing all of the persons who are about to become capital market clients. I love that we have quite a few coming in, right? But again, we will monitor the chat and we will reach out to the winners to make them know. And that person also will win ten thousand dollars towards opening an NCB capital market account with us. Thank you so much, Raju, for that awesome presentation. We don't have a lot of time, so we are going to jump right into our question and answers. I was trying to answer a few as I went along because there were a lot coming in and I don't want us to miss them, right? But Daniel, I'm asking you to just right now, you can relate to us which questions we want to pitch to our experts, Raju and Janil, and then we can go from there. All right. Hello again, everyone. The chat has been blowing up. You guys have a lot of questions and that tells us that you are really engaged. And I'm really happy to see the high level of engagement. It makes me excited to know that all of you guys are interested in the content presented today and all this information to get your wealth journey either started or well on its way. Right. So I picked out three questions from the chat and it will be spread across the three panelists, starting with Raju, then myself, and then Janil. So Raju, there are quite a few questions relating to dividend paying stocks, right? So we mentioned, and Paige mentioned as well, that she that she shared in the chat that Times Jamaica was one of them. But could you just go into telling the audience the importance of dividend paying stocks and which stocks that are recommended by us are top dividend stocks that they can get on their way to receiving good dividend payouts? Oh, no problem. Let me tackle the first question in terms of, uh, the question was why dividend payments are important, right? Yes. Right. So, I mean, dividend payments are dividend payments are important because, in my view, it helps to stabilize your portfolio. Um, clearly, you want to have stocks that you know can give you that strong capital appreciation, but at the same time, especially in instances where you know you might be strapped for cash, it's good to have such companies that can you know give you give you a little payout. Um, especially in times, let's say that there is a 
a, a recession or because dividend paying stocks are typically typically stocks that are a lot more stable they have a lot more cash they don't they're usually a more mature company that don't really need to be reinvesting a lot of a lot of a lot of the cash that they generate so they can easily pay that out and those companies tend to be you know a, a bit more stable in in times of trouble in terms of the economy um you know, going in the wrong direction. So because of that, having a dividend paying stock in your portfolio comes in handy, especially when you might, you, you might be, you know, you might be short on funds, you know, you, you'll be so happy to see that dividend payment come into your stock, into your portfolio. Um, and for that reason, I think that having dividend pay, um, paying stocks in your portfolio is extremely important. As I was saying before, it helps to stabilize your portfolio because you shouldn't really be because stocks that you expect to increase in value or capital appreciation, they tend to be younger stocks that you know have a a, a much longer runway to grow. But you know, with that high level of reward is usually associated with a high level of risk. And when you have a dividend paying stock and stocks that pay dividends, it helps to stabilize and or balance your portfolio. Awesome, great response. So. Additionally, we wanted to know what are some good dividend paying stocks now that are on okay. our research buy list. Sure. So in terms of stocks that are on our research buy list, um, we would have mentioned two of the heavy hitters in terms of Carreras. I would have mentioned Trans Jamaican Highway. I'm seeing, I'm looking at the live uh, at my live list here. I'm seeing where um let me see. I'm seeing where Mail pack has a high dividend yield as well. I think would have mentioned, uh, I think I'm seeing where Massey provides a 4% dividend yield, which is pretty good. I'm seeing where Indies Pharma has a 4.18% dividend yield. Um, as would have mentioned before, companies like GK, they are stable dividend payers. Even through the pandemic, they were paying um, handsome dividends. So, you know, it's 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 a nice mix. Not all of them provide the highest dividend yield, but, you know, which is why it's important for you to buy stocks when they are lower. Because a dividend yield is basically the return you get um, in terms of dividend payments at a particular price point. So usually when you buy a stock at a lower price point, the company might still be paying the same um, dividends in terms of the, the dollar value, but you would be getting a higher dividend yield because you paid for the stock at a lower price. All right. Awesome. Thank you for that response. I see in the chat no on the advice. Um, so that's, that question came to us from JC and Rayner and a lot of other persons would have posted that chat as well. So thank you guys for that question. So we'll move on to another question quickly, which comes from Jessica McCurdy Cooks. How do you decide when to sell a stock? So that's a question that I will, I will actually take. All right, so to everyone, so picking the right time to sell a stock can be tricky, but so if investors sell too early, the stock price may subsequently increase, but and they risk foregoing gains. But if they sell too late, then the stock price may decline and investors may miss an opportunity to maximize gains or cut losses, right? So one thing that I would suggest that investors could find it beneficial to do is set a target price and stick to it. So when you set a desired target price or percentage gain that you would like to achieve when you initially purchase a stock, um, and this should be based on fundamental analysis, we as your brokers or soon to be brokers NTD Capital Markets will provide very robust analysis from the research team. And so what that should be based on the fundamental analysis. So um when, so and that can also help you derive a price, right? And they use valuation methods to derive this price. So um for those that won't necessarily get into the fundamental analysis that's provided to you by NTB Capital Markets. So you can set your desired target price or percentage that you're looking for to exit. Then you can also consider the outlook or the direction of the company. So for example, their dividend payments, as our persons also mentioned um, when some stocks are paying dividends. So if they have dividend payments coming off expansion, stock, stock splits, share buybacks, improving financial performance or company news that will favorably impact the success of the company. These are factors that can assist in decision in a decision to either hold or sell the stock so investors should measure these expectations against their initial outlook and determine if they're in line 
exceed or fall below the expectations and how that will impact the value of the stock over time relative to their initial price target. So, of course, negative or unfavorable news, unfavorable news, consistently poor performance, absence of planning on or strategic growth, um, those things can be an indication that you should dispose of the stock if it's underperforming for a long period of time. That may suggest that it's time again to sell that stock and reinvest the funds in other opportunities that can provide greater returns. So I hope that also provided some clarity on when to actually sell that stock. So just, just before I, I go to another question, so we've been speaking about why you're buying stocks now as well. Right now we have some stocks trading at a lower price point, which is why we're saying to buy now so we can take advantage for when the market rebounds and gets even stronger and we see the stocks appreciating. So we want to get in now. So we can look at averaging down, which means buying the stock at a lower price. So for example, you buy today at $5 and it turns down for a brief time up to $4, you pick up some more. So then you're averaging down the price in which you actually hold the stock. So that's an also another point out there that I want you guys to look out to when, look out for when investing. All right. So just the last question to this, which um this question is um for Janelle and this is based on just some portfolio diversification what is the ideal number of stocks to hold in a portfolio and well let me let me try to to, to get that question down pat but i don't think there's an ideal number it's really dependent on the client themselves dependent on what their objectives are dependent on your dividend yield that you're trying to achieve so it's really dependent on how much funds you're investing as well. So we try to, one, one be diversified. So we try to have stocks in different industries, um, stocks that pay dividends, stocks that give you capital um, appreciation so you can actually achieve your objective. So once the portfolio is designed in a way to help you achieve that objective in the time frame you want to achieve it, there is no limit to the amount of stocks that can be in a portfolio, really. Awesome. Thanks, Janelle. So diversification is key. As long as you pick some sound stocks um, based on fundamentals, based on what you want to achieve, there is no maximum or minimum. Diversification is the key. All right. Thank you. So over to you, Paige. That's all the time that we have for the questions. But of course, we can reach out to you guys to provide additional information and Paige will take over. <laughs> Thank you so much. There were so many questions and great questions that were being asked. But you know, what we want persons to know is that it does not stop here. We are here to provide the answers. If your question was not directly answered this evening, we're asking you to please send an email to ncbcapinfo at jncb.com. They will either be able to answer your question directly or they will refer you to a wealth advisor who can assist you. Now, I just want to say that the winners will be contacted. I'm asking that if it is, I am going to ask someone to just reach out Sorry, my apologies. I'm going to ask someone to reach out, particularly to the person who is new to NTB Capital Markets and would have done that. I am going to try and confirm that before we leave the webinar so that we can get your contact details. Now, as it relates to us moving forward, we are we know we're a little past the time, but we are so grateful that you chose to join us this evening. We hope that you would have benefited from it. And don't worry. It's not one and done, right? This is not the only time that we're going to be doing this. This is something where we are taking the time to really pour into our clients so that you can then pour into yourself, right? We want you guys to be successful on your investment journey and we are here to help. So again, if your question was not answered tonight, we are asking you to please send us an email at ntbcapinfo ntbcapinfo at jncb.com. I would have put it in the chat. Send your questions, send your name and contact information you can put in the subject, webinar attendees, so that we know off the bat what it is that you're coming in for. And we are looking forward to, if you do not have an NTB Capital Markets account with us, please let this be the last time that you say that, right? 
Late, this is the last time that you say that myself, Janil, we are Wealth Advisors. We are here to assist as well as we have a large team of experts and Wealth Advisors who can assist you on your journey. Again, you can reach out to us at ncbcapinfo at jncb.com. Make sure that you're following us on Instagram NCB Capital Markets. We are always posting some information there. And I'm going to ask that you don't leave quite as yet, but that you please, we're going to have an exit poll. We're going to have a survey at the end because we want to hear from you guys how we can do this better, how we can make it better for you. And the only way we're going to know that is if you tell us, right? So please don't leave until you have done that exit survey. Thank you so much for joining us. It has been my pleasure to be your host this evening. And we look forward to the next time we talk in Stocks Unlocked for another Wealth Talk. Thanks so much for joining everyone. Have a great night. Um, social media team, if we can even play again the Go IPO account opening, I think that would be great for the persons who are still on. Opening an investment account on GoIPO is easier than before. Using your NCB online credentials, simply log on to goipo.jncb.com to provide the required information. Our digital biometric identity verification system will confirm your ID instantly, so your account will be opened in minutes. Plus, now you can open your investment account with up to three joint account holders. So build your wealth and experience life with NCB Capital Markets. Investing just got easier. Introducing the NCB Capital Markets mobile app. We've expanded our digital investment solutions just for you. Build wealth anywhere, anytime. Buy and sell equities, manage your investment portfolio, view stock trends and daily market performance. Download today. Register using your existing NCB online banking login credentials. To open an account or get more info, contact our Wealth Hub today. And so we close off this evening. Thank you all for joining. We look forward to, do, to being on your financial journey with you. And thank you again for making it into the capital markets. Have a great evening, everyone. Good night.